Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and this is Ask a Herbert Erpaderp, where I, Herbert Erpaderp, shall respond to your questions. Thanks to everybody who left a question, there were quite a lot of them, more than I was anticipating, which is awesome. Keep it up. As you can see, the footage in the background at the moment is War Thunder. They recently added British tanks to the game, so I had to try them out. They're pretty cool. So far, I still only have the reserve vehicles. I should have a video about that done sometime this week, so stick around for that. I've also been playing a bit more World of Tanks again lately after a fairly long break, so you'll probably see some more World of Tanks related videos in the future too. Hopefully everyone's had a good Christmas, or holiday time, or whatever. Mine was nice and quiet, which is just how I like it. So let's get to these questions. Wildfire Hooligan asks, Does having a small subscriber base make you feel more interactive with your subscribers? Yeah, I think it does. Of course, I'm not opposed to having more subscribers, but I imagine with that comes way more comments, which would make it a bit hard to respond to everything. I like responding to comments. Gerpy42 asks, Where does the name Herbert Erpaderp come from? KV5 Master Rates. I'm not sure if you meant KV5 Masturbates or KV5 Master Race. I took the name from a really old Loading Ready Run video, when they were still doing ENN on The Escapist. There was an 8-bit voice actor or something who only spoke in an odd beep 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 way. The name amused me and I ended up naming one of my first mice that. Here's a picture. You might be able to see why I would give him such a name. At some point I started using it for myself because I think it's funny. Ed Isaac and Jimmy Bob ask, how do you store all the models you own? I store them all over. I don't have a lot of space. I keep a bunch of stuff on these shelves. I have these plastic drawers full of unbuilt models and a few larger kits up here. A lot of my Flames of War models go in these document drawers. Smaller Bolt Action and Malifaux stuff goes in here as well. I also keep some of my Flames of War stuff in a bag I got from Battlefone. Ed adds, are any particularly special for you? I guess the most special one is this Cromwell. It was a gift from a good friend. That's what makes it special rather than anything to do with the model in particular. Daniel the Racing Potato Bouchard, that's a great name. He asks, why did you start doing YouTube? And worst, hardest model to build? I watch a lot of stuff on YouTube and I figured why not make content too? I thought it might be fun and interesting. Also, it's nice to have a creative outlet. I would have to say the worst model I have tried to build is the Airfix Bismarck. The hull parts went together so poorly that I stopped building it and now I use it to test paints and things on. To be fair, when I complained to Airfix they did send me another hull which was pretty nice of them. Other than that, the bolt action Panzer IV was pretty frustrating, though not too bad really. Ruddles asks, Do you come from a family of togs? Are your mother and father togs slash people? If so, then are you part tog and part human? And also adds, I'm so sorry I asked the question I couldn't resist. No, no, you're not sorry at all. No, I am in fact a dinosaur from space. I can only aspire to being as glorious and long as Tog. It's Cam and H Bro Squad asks, Would you be playing War Thunder for a video and where could I buy some flames of all plastic models and paints for them? Have a nice Christmas. Tree, 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 tree. Gift, 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 gift. Tree, 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 tree. Thanks. I had a good Christmas. I hope yours was nice too. I have played War Thunder for videos before. There is some right here in this video. I've also done a couple of other videos on it before and there should be a few more coming soon. I'll make a playlist of them and include it in the description below so you can check them out. I guess where to buy Flames of War models and paint depends on where you're from. In Australia, I get my Flames of War from a shop called Irresistible Force or I order it directly from the Flames of War website. I usually get my paint from the Combat Company. Of course, that doesn't really help if you're not in Australia. Try doing a Google search for some hobby shops or gaming stores nearby. The Ace Destroyer says that his favourite tanks are the M10 Wolverine and the M36 Jackson. Now, what are your favourite tanks? He isn't alone in asking this. I am a little bit indecisive. I find it hard to pick a favourite anything really. Though I would say the T3485, Tiger, KV2 and Cromwell are all contenders for favourite. Of course, there is also the glorious Tog2. Cooper Hamlin asks, Do you plan on doing more 28mm models next year, or will you continue with the 15mm streak? He also adds Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks. Same to you. I think I've been fairly balanced with both scales, though to be honest, I haven't really put much thought into it. There will definitely be some more 28mm scale stuff in the new year, the first of which is this Rubicon Sherman. Jimmy Bob has a series of questions. Would you be up for a game of Flames of War someday? Yeah, sure, that could be a lot of fun. It has unfortunately been a long time since I've actually managed to play the game, so you'd probably kick my ass. Can you show us some of your terrain? I don't actually have a lot of terrain really, I just don't have the space to store it. I do have this flying bomb launch site that I made a while ago. 
and this grounded railway carriage which I think is really cool. If you look closely you can see a 15mm scale rifleman inside. I also have some Bocage hedgerows and roads that I made for Flames of War, but they're boxed up somewhere and I didn't really feel like trying to find them. I have a bunch of these foreground buildings too, and of course the small hills I made a while ago which I will link here. Do you like to hetz in the Hetzer or derp in the KV2? Uh, yes? Both of those are excellent things to do. Put this in the video. No. Oh damn it. What is your profession? Oh! 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 <laughs> this doesn't have to be in the video. I have made a few Plastic Soldier Company models and I like them better than Battlefronts. Anyway, Plastic Soldier Company have some army box sets. I've been looking at the German one. In your opinion, is this a good buy? Too bad it's going in. It's actually a good question. I haven't yet got my hands on one of those box sets myself, but they do seem like a good buy to me. I think Plastic Soldier Company makes some consistently good stuff. Seagull Productions asks, What's your opinion on a Fury prequel film set in North Africa? I thought Fury was awesome, despite being a little bit silly at the end. I would absolutely love to see a prequel. Bucko Gaming in HD asks, How do you base your miniatures and add grass and such to them? Good timing. I just put together a quick overview of my static grass applicator. I use that for basing a lot. I suppose how I base them depends entirely on the model though. It usually involves brown paint, rocks and some static grass. Often I will use green stuff to add slight hills and to press vehicle tracks in for added interest. The static grass applicator video should be online tomorrow. Sir Blue asks, If I was to start Flames of War, what country should I get? I don't know. I guess it depends on what you like. I started with Soviets because they have T-34s and those are awesome. So, Soviets I guess. Jake P. Stevens asks, If you had to fight in World War II, but had the choice as to who to fight for, who would it be? That's a good question. I don't think any side would be much fun. I'd probably be as bad at real war as I am at video game war. Perhaps the Americans, since they joined the war late, less chance of being killed maybe. Probably not as a tanker though. Turning into a fine red paste and being hosed out of a Sherman doesn't sound like a pleasant way to go. As cool as German tanks are, I certainly wouldn't fight for that side. Cherry Bricks says, I'm going to get an Iwata Neo CN airbrush for Christmas and need to ask a question or two. What is the ratio to thinner that you use for Vallejo paints in an airbrush? Nice, I've got an Iwata too. Very good airbrushes. The amount of thinner that I use depends on the paint. Vallejo's Model Air rarely needs thinning since they're obviously designed for airbrush use. Model colour is thicker and does need thinning. Not all colours have the same consistency though. For example, chocolate brown is thicker than say buff, so I would add a little bit more thinner to the brown than the buff. As a general rule of thumb, I mix it about 50-50 with Vallejo thinner. I found it really is just a matter of trial and error to figure out what works best for you, your setup and the paints that you're using. Don't be afraid to experiment. Can Burke Owner asks, What is your favourite joke? I tried really hard to come up with an actual joke. I got nothing. I'm pretty forgetful like that. Der Gevlegel der Ridder? Uh, sorry for mispronunciations. What is a Herbert Erpaderp? Good question. We may never know. Hayden Mann asks, What will you be painting next in a video? I'm going to be starting on these Crix Jacks for War Machine. I've been pondering what colour to do them in. I'll most likely be going with purple. Kuram Wadiwala says, More torps please, more rammings. Herpy derpy. Yes sir. <laughs> well I tried to ram him, maybe next time. Shellshock M3 asks, Will you ever try Hail Caesar by Warlord Games? If so, what army would you choose to play as? I don't have as much interest in Hail Caesar as other games, and as such I don't really know a whole lot about it, but I'd give it a try. I've certainly seen some cool models for that game. Maybe I'd choose the Celts. I'd have to spend some more time looking at the models to decide. Cameron Wolf says, Favourite school subject? Modern history. Favourite colour? Pink or red? Favourite hobbies? Probably model building. Do a face reveal if you haven't already. I'm not entirely sure why you would want to see my face, but, well, here it is. It's very, uh face-like. Do a subscriber thing playing online games. That could be fun. Hayden Man also asks, Can you make a parody of Shake It Off called Hetz's Gonna Hetz? I just checked that song out on YouTube. I didn't enjoy it. I wouldn't be opposed to hearing a parody somebody else did though. Michael Hess says, Who or what inspired you to both get into modelling and create a YouTube account and do you currently have a role model you look up to? He also asks, Do you listen to music or watch videos while you model or do you prefer to have no distractions? I can't remember what initially started me with modelling. It's something I always loved doing as a kid. Mostly model railways. An ex-girlfriend actually got me into gaming models years ago with Warhammer 40k. I never had the nerdy kind of friends that were into that sort of thing when I was growing up unfortunately. 
I got into YouTube because I thought it might be a fun, creative outlet. As it turns out, I quite enjoy actively making content rather than just consuming it. As far as role models go, I guess it isn't really something I've put a whole lot of thought into, though I'd say Adam Savage is a good one. I really enjoy hearing what he has to say about model building and life in general. I'd love to visit his man cave someday. Usually when I'm working on models, I watch stuff on YouTube or streams. Actually, Tested's The Adam Savage Project is a favourite of mine to watch when I'm working on models and videos. Another is Loading Ready Run's live streams. I also do rough edits and write out scripts for modelling videos while I'm watching these things, which undoubtedly makes the process take a lot longer because I'm easily distracted, but I find it more enjoyable that way. Kyle Mathers asks, What 15mm brand is your favourite in terms of quality? Battlefront? Plastic Soldier Company, Zvezda, Peter Pig, etc. I've never built anything by either Peter Pig or Zvezda, though I'd not be opposed to doing so. I'm not sure to be honest. The new plastic from Battlefront is really quite good. Plastic Soldier Company is pretty consistently good. Probably Plastic Soldier Company though. Battlefront does have a much larger range, but if you're asking about quality, their resin and metal stuff can be a bit dodgy. Personally, I'm glad to have both options. Robert Curry asks, will there be more mice related videos in the future? Almost certainly. They can be a little bit hard to film though. I see them doing cute things all the time, but they stop once I get the camera. When I have something cool, I'll share it. He also says, sub game in Heroes and Generals or other World War II game in the future perhaps. As I said before, that could be a lot of fun. Might take a little bit of effort to schedule, but it's certainly something I'd like to look into. The Watcher says, seeing how you like World of Tanks, how do you compare it to War Thunder and or Armored Warfare and vice versa? Any things you like more on a particular game or two? He also says he enjoys my content and wishes me a good Christmas and New Year, to which I say thanks and the same to you. I think all three games are quite good. World of Tanks and War Thunder get points for having World War II era tanks, which I'm more interested in than the bulk of Armored Warfare's vehicles. Not that that makes it bad. I think War Thunder looks prettier, and I really like that you can get your tank covered in mud. I generally play a lot more World of Tanks than War Thunder though, maybe because I have a lot more tanks I can use there. I really don't enjoy grinding, so I still haven't got a lot of tanks in War Thunder, unlike World of Tanks which I've been playing for many years. I still haven't played a lot of Armored Warfare, so I can't really make many comparisons with it yet. In the end though, I can't really say any game is better than the other. They're all just different, and fortunately they're all free, so it's pretty easy for anyone to try them all out for themselves. Jamie Tranter asks, How much herb would a Erpaderp herb if Herbert Erpaderp could Erpaderp herb? <laughs> uh, 73.2, no more, no less. The Angry Saxon asks, Is your dad Paul Hogan? Hmm, I don't think so. I hope not. Barry McQueen says, Have you considered playing Company of Heroes 2? I looked in my Steam library to see if I have Company of Heroes 2, and it turns out that I've actually played two hours of it and forgotten about it. I think I'll have to give it another go. Aaron Van Horn asks, What first got you into loving tanks? I can't remember. Probably seeing them in movies as a kid or something. And finally, Jeffrey Chen asks, What are your thoughts on console and mobile gaming? My immediate thought is to joke about consoles being for peasants. Though I don't have a problem with either consoles or mobile gaming. I have no interest in buying a console myself, and I don't own a TV, so I would just be connecting it to my PC monitors anyway. I have tried to play games like World of Tanks Blitz on my phone, but I didn't much enjoy it. Gaming on a touchscreen just doesn't work for me. To each their own though. As long as you enjoy your time gaming, it doesn't really matter what you do it on. That really was a lot of questions. I couldn't leave them all unanswered for two weeks, so I'll be putting this up today, which, barring some kind of fuck up, is Tuesday. I guess I will do this as a weekly thing for the time being. I quite enjoyed this, so be sure to ask more questions and I'll answer them in the next video. I may at some point ask you questions too. Actually, here's a question. Are there any specific models you would like to see me build and eventually paint? I have a small amount of Christmas money and while I do have a list of things I would like to buy, I'm also interested in what suggestions you might have. Of course, no guarantees that I will actually buy the suggested models, but ideas are good. If you've enjoyed the War Thunder gameplay in the background of this video, I will be putting up a video about the British vehicles that I've been trying out. Probably on Friday or Saturday, depending on what happens on New Year's Eve. Hopefully this video was interesting or entertaining for you. Don't forget to click subscribe if you would like to see more. And of course, leave your questions or any other comments you might have in the comments section below or on Facebook or Twitter, both of which are linked in the description. Thanks for watching. Farewell.